Good day and welcome back to Everything Windows. In this video, we're going to do an experiment building Windows XP and Whistler from UFI. Is it viable or just a feature hole to the beta build? Keep watching to find out. So, here we are in front of the NT Devs video about installing Windows XP on UFI. So, well, as we know, Windows XP is just a whole lot of different revolution for the operating system, especially in Windows. And if you want to know, with a bit of an experiment, with a bit of a workaround tinkering, Windows XP is able to boot from UFI. The evidence? See the anti-devs video. So, I have installed Windows XP. Uh, we're just gonna do a quick Winver. That's it, Windows XP Service Pack 3, and in front of me here is Windows Whistler Build 2419 and the off filter machine which is Windows Whistler Build 2296. Do an experiment, the same experiment across three machines or three different operating system types. So Right now, we are gonna do Windows XP Service Pack 3 first because that's the first one that we are going to experiment. So, first up, a disclaimer. If you wanna do an experiment with this kind of thing, booting Windows XP from UFI, you have to format or install Windows XP or Wuslab on FAT32 format, not NTFS because for some reason you just don't really want to do it on the VM or on the machine. It won't run correctly. And well, a little, a little bit of a background. So in Windows Longhorn, there are some experiments of booting Windows via UFI and it is kind of successful and this is what NTDev was taking from Windows Vista Beta. As you can see, it is version 6.0.5219. This is Windows Vista post reset build. So, le let me just show you how we're gonna do that. We're going to C drive? Oh, before I do, we just wanna note, we're, we're gonna watch a bit through the video. So, that's right there. And so, this is the modification and We'll do the exact same on Windows XP and 3 virtual machine, of course. So, show the hidden content files and folders because it's Windows XP. And uh, first up, we're going to make a new folder, call it EFI, and then we're going to new, and then boot. And in the boot directory, we're going to copy the EFI and drag it over. And before we go into copy anything, we just have to change this to boot IA32.EFI. <laughs> yes, so this shows the difference to boot Windows XP via EFI on 32 bit because as far as I am seeing the video, NTDev hasn't experimented on a 64 bit, but he did with NTFS, which ended up it won't work. So what we're going to do is go to C, Windows, System32, and I'm going to load, and we're going to copy the winload.efi, and copy it over, and it'll load, and to make sure it is right there, yes, because it's the same, and then, after that, we're going to back right in the beginning of the C drive, and we're going to tinkering with the folder options, because we want to show hidden files and folders with the protect system files. And then we're going to modify the boot. And we're going to set out with no BCD. And the last one is use new loader. And then control S to make sure it is all safe. Go into folder option. And then we're going to hide it again. <laughs> yes. We're going to apply. And... We go well to make sure we're gonna do Winver and that's right there and then going to 
my explorer and then we're going to do some notepad ish and we're gonna open up some programs to make sure that it is a real windows xp copy and we're gonna do a quick spider solitaire just to make sure it is a demo and no i don't want to do that now so it is running the program and yada 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 now i know i want random gibberish because we're just gonna do it real quick I, because i am so curious how this will gonna work so we're gonna no i don't want to save it and press the windows key turn off computer not restart but turn off after that go into the edit virtual machine settings just want to modify it to boot into ufi and what we're going to do is well even though it is uh not available going to modify this into some kind of a windows vistrish and still don't and maybe we could have just said other no we don't want that to other and make it boot via fire because it is available of course and we're gonna pray that it will boot on efi oh that is so curious oh it will if it will gonna boot normally and the moment of truth oh there it is well, i thought it was gonna boot <laughs> because it took a bit long to load and it is successful well i'm pretty sure just say thank you to nt the oh goodness uh, i see what nt dev suffers the resolution is askewed and this is a specific on 1366 by 768 so i don't know why maybe it is graphic glitches and i haven't installed vmware tools any vmware tools oh goodness this is a daunting oh no we will just set it into low and then enter yes and we're gonna reset it into 720p because ah that's good and so there it is windows xp booting on efi ufi that's right there fat32 we're gonna reap do that again notepad and I'm gonna type but yeah it is a bit like not stable because Windows XP doesn't really design to be in that way to boot on UFI so uh, I'm just gonna type some gibberish and to make sure it is okay and no I don't want to save that and we'll just play some yeah it is a bit it is very slow so I'm gonna just play some random to make sure that it is working correctly i'm going to j q q j and then j g10 so that's there windows xp successfully running on successfully booting on ufi and gonna start and we're gonna switch up to the next one which is windows whistler build 2419 oh gosh i just want to see it is applicable in this very moment so we're gonna refresh this we're gonna see the content ah yeah it's already content and we're going to move the folder right there and yes view the entire and we're gonna do the same so we're gonna make a new folder with yeah and then I'm gonna do the same folder boot and then I'm gonna do the same I'm just gonna spit up the thing boot.ini and then I'm gonna do the same no bcd and I'm going to use new loader that's great control s all right so it has been set up before we go going to do anything just open readme dot readme notes and into recycle bin and here's it and going to the save gonna close that and turn off the computer and turn off because we just want to change the thing to UFI first options 
other other fans um, I'm gonna upgrade it to version 10 look limitation no you fight the cube support of course of course alter the virtual machine yes and then close and we hope that'll be there the UFI option yes that's correct and we're gonna see the moan of truth again so I hope this will gonna work Caron okay so we got a uh, still a blank screen Alright, so the display is the same again. Right click and properties and uh, this is a daunting task again. 800 by 600. Okay. Yes, I'm gonna redo this to 720p okay yes so this proves that even in the windows whistler it is viable to boot via ufi like what well, i am surprised like wow it is work it is working and i haven't thought that for a while <laughs> If I have seen this on XP, I'll just boot it via UFI. And but this one gonna guarantee you can install this Windows XP Whistler on a newer computer. It, it, it is it is not a guarantee. So just do this on a virtual machine, mate. Cause it won't gonna work really much either. So we're gonna open up Readme Notes again. Recycle bin. It is still the same, and uh, that was right there. And the cycle bin is nothing to the start. Turn off, turn off. All right, so going to the lighter version, which is version 2267. I mislabeled the build right there, but no worries. Going to boot up. And the uh, boot screen will gonna available. Yes, that's there. And we'll begin once in the desktop. Alright, we're in the login screen. I am not bothered to install the graphic driver because I don't want it as of now. So build 2267 right there as listed. Go to the start to run Winver. That's right there, build 2267. We can change it to the. Yeah, 800 seems on. Oh, no. it, it is not viable in VMware. <laughs> so we're gonna open up the ISO. The ISO has been inserted while we're waiting to auto. No, I don't think so. Alright, so drive D. And that's right there, we're going to copy this. We'll redo the same. So. I'm gonna fast forward it. Alright, so it has been set up and we're going to start and turn off. Turn off. Upgrade the virtual machine. Going to upgrade it to version 9.x. Alter the virtual machine. Okay, close. And I'm going to classify this as a options. Other. No. Other. Other. UFI. And we're going to see the moment of truth. If, if this will boot 
then I'll be so freaking surprised. As later you see, the build 2267 is not capable to run under UFI for some reason. So, the conclusion is there is somewhere between the build 241X's in which is added the experimental UFI boot mode capability. In the meantime, do not try this on your real machine, and see you next time. Goodbye.